three phases of life. But later when you confront to the patient, when you take a consent, we say, see, everything can go smooth. But nobody can guarantee 100% to the Just because what happens is, I mean, you, you know, how many flights are flying from one destination to another destination? Does the airline guarantee you that any, if there is no delay in the flight, there is no flight accidents, there is no hijack or anything? Nobody. But still we want to fly. But when it comes to a doctor, okay, you want to give, you want to, I mean, you have to give 100% guarantee. So there is a change in the mentality, the commercial mentality of people, which is causing unrest to themselves also and unrest to the doctors also. So they, that's why the medical uh, litigation industry and the insurance and uh, liabilities and all these things are going on. But definitely we are at, uh, uh, at a greater advantage because what we do is that the experience of service in the work makes us a community. So uh, I asked my uh, uh, colleague, uh, you know, what is your version of uh, spirituality in your country? He said, he said, he told me a story. Once uh, Narada was, uh, went to Vishnu and he said, uh, I am your biggest devotee. Uh, is, uh, is there anybody who is uh, bigger than me? Then uh, uh, Vishnu gave him a bottle full, bottle full of water. He said, don't spread it. Go around this uh, mountain and come back. So very diligently he held the ball and then he went around the mountain and came back. And then uh, uh, God asked, I mean Vishnu asked him, Okay, so now you finish the task? Yes, I finished the task. So how many times you chanted Narada, I mean Vishnu in, in the process? He said, no, I was very, you know, very much concentrated there. I go, how can I? So then he said, no, go look at that farmer. Who? That farmer is a bigger devotee because despite what he does, he remembers me. So uh, as a neurosurgeon, uh, in, uh, when you are operating on the brain, Every millimeter you can cause weakness in a hand or a leg or maybe you know, the eye, eyeball can't move or the tongue might not uh, uh, be able to function. The ear uh, sensation, I mean hearing might get lost. So all these things are just matter of millimeters. And you are using instruments like suction, maybe a electrical cautery or PUSA, that is an ultrasonic aspirator to take out the tumor. There is a high potential of injury to very, very delicate structures. So the amount of focus you need there, it's mind-blowing actually. And uh, definitely it's so emotionally exhausting as soon as you finish your surgery, you want to take a nap for at least an hour. So that is, you know, when you say meditation, you get detached from uh, everything else and then focus on just breathing. This is the reverse meditation of where you don't even focus on your breathing also, you just focus on what job is it. That is, that is why I feel Kaya Kave Kailasa is the best. Uh, that is the only way of service to humanity and service to the rest of the world, I mean the animals and plants, wherein you can bring in peace rather than the greed of having more, okay, I want to do more surgeries, I want to get more money, I want a bigger bungalow, bigger car, bigger uh, uh, farmers, holidays. So you don't need that. You have to be in peace with you, with yourself, wherever you are, however you are, whatever you are. So that is like, that is what is my understanding. So for me, spirituality is not a ritual, it is the core ethics and principles of every move calculating the benefits, risk to quality of life, the finance and so when you, uh, so whenever we are operating, we will be calculating the risk. Shall I take out this bit of tumor and uh, you know, put my collar up saying that I have taken out the whole tumor? Or shall I leave that and, uh, I mean, maybe there is a risk of one now not functioning after the surgery. Or shall I leave it and be uh, humble and say that, okay, I have left a bit of tumor, maybe your immunity will take, will take care of it, maybe it might not grow at all. Maybe it might grow to a small extent till your lifetime, so it might, you don't need another surgery. Or, I mean, that amount of calculation could be going on at every point of surgery. It's like, it's not, an, it's not a simple surgery where in, in general surgery you put your finger all around the tumor and then you pluck it out. It's, it's like everything around it is a normal structure functioning brain. So, you just want to take out that what is the norm. So, that is, I mean, definitely uh, the rush, adrenaline rush you get during surgery. And uh, so when you look at finance, I said the absolute aspect is uh, 
the ecosystem. So ecological effectiveness is what you need to look for. So uh, I mean, somebody say, okay, no, ugra logo the kodli any bit kunda. Somebody might have a small infection. You just uh, you know change their lifestyle, decrease their uh, calorie intake. Maybe their immunity only will take care of it. Otherwise, what they do, they give all sorts of higher antibiotics, and that's how we have multiple drug resistance and uh, uh, daily belly and all these. Uh, so all these things. When you, I mean, what is the social implication of your work, whatever you do? And uh, there are so, so many people who come with back pain. I, I have I have not operated on a uh, spine case for the past uh, one and a half week. For neuros, for a neurosurgeon, a spine surgery is the bread of bread. It's like bread. Uh, brain is butter. So if I mean, you have to have one or two spine cases in a week to be called a neurosurgeon. But I say. There are so many drugs which you can give, you can make, ask them to change their lifestyle and that will set it right. Maybe maybe in 2-3 days they will be fine. Why do you want unnecessarily do surgery? There are many people, they do surgeries, they do put screws, they fix the uh, bones. I mean, what for? Okay, okay, the medicine might not work, so I'll give. There are few surgeons who actually don't even give any pain killing medicines till you are admitted and operated and then they say, Okay, I am starting the medicine, so okay, either the relief is from surgery or from medicine, nobody knows. So, this is how the business, I mean the greed among doctors, the greed among patients also, they don't want to, they don't want to change their lifestyle. Okay, uh, a high flying uh, CEO, he wants to just relax in his life, want to booze and then want to uh, have a smoke and then ultimately, but he wants to have all the fried foods, but he doesn't want to exercise, he doesn't want to reduce his weight. And he, he has a so much of negative karma balance of looting from the world. So, where, how will the disease cure on its own? Human body is made to cure on its own by, by evoking the energy within you. The chakras, all these chakras, are, you can equate them to what we call nerves, the nerve plexus. Actually, brain is a huge uh, uh, CPU. But what happens is there are multiple nerves going out from the brain in the spinal cord and the <coughs> so the nerves integrate in these plexus, what we call uh, cervical plexus, the cardiac plexus, mesenteric plexus, and uh, hypogastric plexus, iliac plexus, all these. So these plexus are uh, the anatomical correlations of the ch uh, chakras. So we need to integrate them. We need to keep them in balance. What, what keeps them in balance is the good karma. So, no. so when you are humble and you submit yourself to the Ananta Brahma, the cosmos of variables, then you will know that you are not the you are not the reason for a good outcome, and probably you will be at lesser guilt because you are not the only reason for a bad outcome. So that is why many of the neurosurgeons might. Uh, I mean, there are few neurosurgeons who have practice fearing that they might cause complications. And there are a few neurosurgeons who have committed suicide because after just after the complication. So, uh, so ultimately what we need is the integration of the multiple factors. It's, it's like uh, this challenge was, uh, I mean, it's not only me as a surgeon. I mean, treatment is nearly 70 to 80% of surgery and 20% of the post-operative period. So what happens is that major 70 to 80%, the nurse, whether she is qualified enough, the instruments are they good enough or uh, the other equipment in the OT, all these things are the ones which will make your job easier. But I mean, if everything is easier, what, where is the challenge in that? And if a person who is poor, who can't afford a bigger hospital and I can't serve him in a smaller setup, trying to, maybe I will have to go slow with the surgery take longer hours, maybe try to use this, I mean, whatever instruments are there, but give the best result at that, that situation. So when I took up this challenge, I realized the big dearth of quality care, at least, I mean, and the, no, what do you say, versatility of surgeons to be ready to work in, um, I mean, non-routine atmospheres. That doesn't happen any time. Any time. And if you meet a surgeon, he'll say, you have to come to this hospital only because I'll operate there only. I know everybody. And there is so much of shadow surgeries happening. He will take you there, some you may will operate you, and then he'll come to So all these things, when you look at, where is the ethics in profession? So all these things made me 
jump into our India against corruption. So that's how my political journey started. So but as I said, the all these factors will influence, but much more importantly, the factor about the patient's ability to recover, his capacity, the reserve capacity. As I said, if somebody is smoking, having alcohol, laughing, eating all junk food, and then uh, he's shouting at everybody, he's angry, he's frustrated in life, uh, he wants, he's uh, addicted to many things, and then the brain shrinks, the nerves will uh, demyelinate, what we call the, or the insulin coat and the insulation around the nerves that will get destroyed. So when when the person is already weak. How can he recover from a major onslaught of a head injury or a stroke or anything? So whatever the surgeon does or the physician does, it's just a you know needle model. So you need to take into factor all these things when you're projecting the outcome of a patient. So when you say that you know it's very difficult, many a times you might be missing out on fact a few of the variables, but ultimately we. Uh, we as patients, we need to realize that our health is in our hands. We need to preserve it. And many a time, the human potential, if, some, if the same humans could build pyramids, then probably we are losing our musculoskeletal uh, capacity. So probably we are underutilizing and we are uh, uh, destroying our reserve capacities, either physically, emotionally, psychologically, spiritually. <coughs> So, what going through the journey, I realized.